Welcome back to my channel for another Leica episode. And this video is an unboxing and a first look at a new limited special edition of the Leica Dlux 7, which is not typically a camera I'm looking into because people who follow me on my channel know that I most of the time deal with full frame or medium format cameras. But you know, this camera is so cool that I wanna show it on my channel. The design principle underlying that new limited special edition of the Leica Dlux 7 could be called Bape times Stash times Leica. And Bape stands for Bathing Ape and is a very much hyped fashion brand from Japan. Stash stands for an artist, we come to that, and Leica, well, we all know that. Without further ado, let's get this box open, let's see what's inside, and then let's collect all the information and data points we wanna know about this camera, the design, the underlying design principles, the artist, and that fashion brand. This special edition of the Dlux 7 is limited to 1800 units worldwide. So let's open the box carefully in order not to destroy any value here. And uh, I just opened my tool here. So let's get this in and cut it open very careful. Here we go. And uh, I think now we can take the box out. See, it's also not in the right direction. Let's try to... Very good. And uh, we also keep the outer box because collectors will like to have that. And now we can turn it around and can have a closer look at that new Leica Dlux 7. Here I have now the box. And uh, if I get this closer to the camera, we can read here Leica Dlux 7, a bathing ape times stash edition. And it's black anodized and it has this super cool camouflage finish. And that's why I think I don't care this time about sensor size because the Leica Dlux 7 has a micro four third sensor and that's substantially smaller than what I normally shoot, namely full frame or medium format. Looking at the packaging and having opened so many of these boxes in the last years, I guess this is one of these boxes which falls apart if I open it. So let's see if that works. Let's get this open here. Careful, of course, and here we go. So it unfolds the main box here, and then in the main box, we typically have at the top the camera. Nice, very nice, comes in a box here. Very cool finish, and uh, we can just carefully open this here, and then we can have a look inside. And then I take out what's inside. So first of all, here is the shoulder strap. This is one of these shoulder straps you see from time to time coming with Leica. Then there is the camera here. And let's put the box back here. Here we go, a very small camera compared to what you normally see on my channel, but with the coolest design and finish I've seen for a long time. So let's get this out. Here we go, Bape. Bape stands for Bathing Ape, as I said. It also has here the graffiti from that artist, which we are going to explore in a moment. And it's a very nice camera with an absolutely brilliant finish here. No fingerprints, super designed in a camouflage type style, Leica logo here, and also a very special lens cap, which we are going to look into in a moment. And then the usual manual elements, which we can use here if you wanna shoot that camera in a manual way. Very, very nice. We also get in the main box here a nice camera pouch or small bag which you can use to carry around the camera if you want. Again, with the logo from the artists and the design we have here. I think it's made a bit simple. You know, I would not call this a camera bag, but at least is a pouch which can protect the camera on travel if you don't have an alternative with you. Let's see what else we have in the box here. And there are the two well-known drawers here. That one here typically contains some of the manuals. And yes, here we go. Let's take this out for a moment. So we have here, first of all, a warranty certificate, and then we have a manual. It's always easier to download these manuals to your smartphone so you have it with you and can have a look at it when you need it. No one carries around paper brochures, but you know, it's in the box and it used to be in the box for many years. And then we have another box here or another drawer. And uh, here we have, I think that is a special lens cap here. Let's have a look, that's interesting. We'll see later how this all fits together, but it looks like a lens cap to me. So we'll have a look into this later. 
Let's see what else we have. There is some rubber band here, which I don't know what this is for. We'll find out. There is a charger. There is a battery. I already have these type of batteries and I also already charged one. So we can go and shoot. This is another component for the charger. Then we have a cable here. And then we have another shoulder strap, which is this time leather and has a Leica logo. And here, let's see what's in there. I open the back and then we have a look. Here's the back now open. That is a tiny little flash, which is part of the shipping accessories of the Leica d Look 7. Quite nice. It's a very lightweight flash. You just clip it onto the hot shoe and then you have a flash with you. It's one item to carry around in a separate way, but it's so small, so lightweight that I don't care. And most of my cameras, when I shoot them, don't have a flash attached. I need to have a separate flash and these are typically very, very big instruments of generating light when I need it. In the meanwhile, I did some housekeeping here with my new Leica d Look 7. And first of all, I applied a matte anti-fingerprint display protector here. It will help me to avoid scratches on the display, but it also reduces nicely reflections. And you see this when I play a little bit with the camera and the light here. I also inserted a charge battery and you can open the battery compartment here. Then you can take the battery out. This battery is supposed to last for about give or take 300 shots, which is good. We have a couple of spare batteries in the studio anyway. I also prepared an SD card and since this is a 4K video camera here, I wanted this to be a fast SD card. So first of all, capacity 256 gigabyte, plenty of space and then a reading speed of 280 megabit per second, which you can see at the bottom of the card and writing speed 250 megabit per second. And that will do the job definitely on this tiny little camera here. So let's insert it. And then we are basically ready to shoot. There is one more thing and guess what that is. People following me on my channel know that I'm not a shoulder strap person. You know, exceptions confirm the rule. As you saw in two Leica Q2 videos I recently posted where I actually used the shoulder strap for good reasons, but typically I don't want to have it. And this camera is, I would not say slippy, but it is a bit risky to hold it like this. So I really want to have a hand grip and there is a dedicated hand grip for the Leica d Look 7 and it's this one here. And actually, if you look at the top of the camera here, you have this matte black finish here and that matches nicely the matte black finish of that hand grip. So it should actually look not too bad, although we will, based on the hand grip, lose a little bit of sight to this nice texture here and this nice camouflage finish. So let's mount it and let's see how this looks like. Let me get this right here. So let's screw this on. And now, at least for me, this camera has the right grip. See, this is just perfect. And uh, by the way, in terms of design, it's such a small camera. So I don't have large hands for a grown up adult male human being, but this camera fits in the palm of my hand. And the camera is so lightweight, so non-intrusive because it is so small and compact that people will hardly notice that you shoot them. That's why it is made for street photography, made for reportage photography, and probably the ideal camera for a fashion vlogger or for someone who wants to capture scenes without having people focusing on the tool with which you are capturing the images. And it also fits into the pocket of any coat and you can have this with you at all times. So it's a fantastic camera. It's also, by the way, super feature packed. And I was surprised to see what Leica packed into this camera. And a good indication for that is the number of pages in the instruction manual. And the instruction manual for the Leica d Look 7 has more pages than the manual for the Leica SL or the SL2S. And it has almost triple the pages of the instruction manual of a Leica M11, which, okay, maybe is also due to the minimalistic character of rangefinder cameras. But it has more pages in the manual than the SL2 and the SL2S. And it is fully packed with features, which totally surprised me. I normally don't shoot this type of cameras. And uh, people who follow me on my channel know that. I shoot high-end gear, full-frame sensors, medium-format sensors, film roll cameras. You know, very expensive, very capable lenses, but this tiny little package, and it really is a holistic package here, did surprise me and I became a big fan of it. So I like it actually. I will take this camera with me at various occasions now and it will be a second camera I have with me, a spare camera, but it is a camera which is worthwhile to have with you and it's also super quick. We come to that in a moment. Now in the unboxing, we also found this lens cap here. And uh, there is a reason why this is in the package. And if we take the camera now, we have here the BAPE designed lens cap, which is fixed mounted and opens when I 
switch on the camera. So let's switch on the camera and let's have a look here. So the lens comes out and this opens up here and you can also do this in a different way and that's why these spare parts are in the box. Let's say you are a collector and you are afraid that this especially designed babe lens cap here will get some damage if you shoot the camera more frequently. Then you can take it off. So we just rotate it here and we can take it off. And then we take that ring which was in the box and we mount it here and clip it on. And then we have the normal lens cap here, Leica designed, Leica style, can clip it on and then the camera is ready to go. Now you might think then you need to be careful before switching on the lens, you need to take that lens cap off. But that actually is not the case because the lens cap is mounted inside the lens tube. So I can easily switch this on. Let's quickly do this here. And it just comes out with the lens. So the lens cap does not have to be removed, but it is not open immediately. That's clearly the advantage of the babe designed lens cap. Here you don't have to clip off a lens cap. It is open immediately and then it closes. Maybe the disadvantage is that there is some space here and maybe dust and dirt gets easier closer to the lens. But in general, a good idea to have both versions here. I like it a lot so I can spare my babe designed lens cap if I want and can go with this version. But if I want to really impress people, clearly I use this one. The second item I did not explain in the unboxing was this band here or rope or whatever you want to call it. And uh, this is useful for the lens cap to not get lost. And let me quickly show that. On the lens cap here you have some spare openings and you can use this and then connect it to the lens cap and connect this one here to the camera body and then your lens cap will not drop off, will not get lost and you have it mounted to some extent and secured on the camera. I don't use that, I'll just put it right away back in the box because that's nothing I need to pay attention to. But it is in the box and it comes with it, so enjoy it or just leave it in the box. Let's spend a few seconds on the two artists who designed that camera. So the first one is Stash and his real name is Josh Franklin. He's a New York street culture artist specialized in graffiti and his nickname Stash actually comes from the hidden messages he sometimes places in his arts. And uh, what you see as graffiti on the camera is actually his signature. Josh Franklin was born in Long Island, beautiful place by the way, in New York in 1967. He grew up in the big city and as a young boy he actually illegally sprayed graffiti art on the sides of city subway trains. But then he made his art a profession and he started to work in the 90s with designs with high profile brands like Nike, Reebok, Casio, you know, and now a bathing ape. And the bathing ape is actually a Japanese fashion brand founded in 1993 and is specialized in men's, women's, children's lifestyle and streetwear. They run 19 stores in Japan and they became quite popular also outside of Japan, of course. And uh, now they teamed up with Stash and with Leica to create this beautiful Leica d Look 7 in a limited edition with only 1800 units worldwide. The camera has a lot of elements incorporated in a very small camera body and the first one on the lens is the aperture ring here and there is an automatic setting here and then you are basically in let's say automatic mode for the aperture setting but you can open it as wide as 1.7 and by the way it's a very capable lens because we talk here about an Vario Sumilux 1 to 1.7 to 2.8. So if you shoot this at the 75 millimeter full frame equivalent, which corresponds to the 34 millimeter written here, in terms of focal length, you actually still shoot at an f 2.8, which is very powerful. And uh, this aperture ring works like a charm. It also has the usual clicks. We are used to that in the Leica universe. Very nice. We also have a very smooth focus ring here. And you can also use this focus ring for other functions. You can customize it in the menu. It's quite nice. We can here choose our aspect ratio. So this is four to three. This is a one on one, 16 to nine and three to two. So you have all the options here and the camera recognizes what you set up here. You also have here a focus switch. So if you want to go, let me try to bring this better into scene. You have your autofocus, then you have autofocus for close up shots and this camera lens combo has macro capabilities built in and you can switch it into manual focus. So quite nice. You have mechanical elements for all these settings on this tiny little camera body. You also have here a lot of elements which I don't want to describe in detail. You have here 
almost a rangefinder type shutter speed dial. So you can go here as fast as one over 4,000 seconds. On the mechanical shutter, if you use the electronic shutter, it goes much faster to one over 16,000 seconds. You have all the settings here. This is the automatic mode. You have here a lot of buttons you can customize. You have 4K photos, I come to that in a moment. You have an exposure compensation dial here. Quite nice, very robust, very nicely built, very solid is really the design language of Leica. Everything works like a charm. And uh, we actually have a feature pack camera, as I said. So let's switch it on. And you have here a quick menu. And that quick menu you can operate via touchscreen. I deactivated the touchscreen, it's not really my style, but you can also use these control buttons here. And uh, we have a very rich menu. So if I go here into the menu, and you have, first of all, a clean menu, but so many features and so many features which are not for granted. So let's quickly go into that here. I mean, we have 17 megapixel of resolution. That is not super rich, but I will do another video where I show how you can actually translate 70 megapixel images into 50 megapixel and more images. And it works like a charm with that camera. I already tried it out with a photo I took in Zurich downtown and then I enlarged it with an AI software, but there are also other techniques you can use. And then you get a high resolution image, which is very clean and is very nice and suitable for large dimensional prints. We have quality here, autofocus settings. We have all kinds of things you can set up here. And uh, you know, if people would be super interested, I'm happy to do a detailed tutorial on the D-Look 7. It's not my home turf, this type of cameras, as I said before but I have spent now quite some time with the camera and uh, I'm sure there are some things I can explain which people might have overlooked so far. By the way, you have image stabilization here, which is nice. You have 4K photo where you basically record 30 frames per second and then you can extract an eight megapixel frame here. You can also extract from 4K videos, single frames with eight megapixel, which is convenient. You have self timer, you have time-lapse shot, you have stop motion animation. As I said, it's feature packed and it's so rich in things you can learn and try out. What's also convenient is the tiny little flash, which is an extra component you carry around with you. But as I said, it's lightweight and uh, doesn't really contribute to your luggage. And if we mount that for a second, it's actually working really well. First of all, you can mount it here on the hot shoe. It snaps in, it cannot drop off, and then you have a button here to push and then you can remove it. And that is quite nice in the way it works, I think. And uh, if you want to just brighten up a portrait in front of you or a scene, and then this is already good enough. So let's do one test shot with the flash just out of fun. We switch it on here. And then you see the flash is not available here as is indicated by this icon in the camera. But if I switch it on, this starts to flash. And now the flash is ready and I can shoot with flash. Have a look. Quite nice, huh? And this is really a tiny flash, but it's quite capable. And if you have a subject in front of you, let's say three to five meters away, this is way of enough light in a dark scene to lighten it up. So quite nice. Before we go into street photography and do a live demonstration of the camera and look into sample images, I wanna make one more point and that's on image stabilization. And you see the image stabilization in the lens. If I shake this a little bit, you see that this is kind of not fixed. Have a look here. Do you hear that noise? And do you see that lens element inside going forth and back? That is not happening if the camera is switched on because then it's stabilized. Have a look here. Now this is on. No more noise. It's just fixed. So if you purchase one of these cameras and you're concerned about that noise, just switch it on and the noise is gone. Nothing here any longer. If I switch it off, the noise will come back. And that's a clear sign that we have image stabilization here in the lens. You hear the noise? That's what it is. And image stabilization works quite well, so you really gain a few stops. And uh, again, I think it's absolutely amazing what Leica packed in this small, tiny camera body here.
I really hope you liked that video, that unboxing and the street photography demonstration with that camera. I repeat what I said before, I started to love this camera. It's a nicely designed camera, it's working very well, the image quality is absolutely fantastic. 17 megapixel is not a showstopper for me, this will be good enough for let's say reasonably large prints, but you can also beef it up by AI technology like Gigapixel AI or by multi-shot technologies as I said. I will come up with a video on that and show you how to do that. And uh, I think is the perfect companion for street photography and for every situation where you don't want to catch attention with a camera like in reportage photography or in other situations. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There is always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.